got to keep my fade tight. You know the importance of a tight fade. I know all about it. All right, Rick, what's you, hey, you rolling? Yep. You fucking rolling that shit? You better be. Oh, that's right. You are in the luxurious crib of Papa Roach right here. It's Tobin and me, this is like our, we just took this in for outer space. We came in from uh, Hanover, Germany, and uh, we landed here at, where are we? Reading. Reading. I'm about to get nutty. This is a hologram of me, because I never carry my own bags. It's the hologram, right? So I'm I met this guy in outer space right here as well. He came from the planet Gorgon. Gorgon? Yeah, that's right here. Why are you carrying your bags? This is, this is, a, this is a, a, a hologram of myself. Before we go and watch Papa Roach absolutely conquer Reading Festival, Let's throw back to early on in the day where I caught up with Jacoby Shaddix and we talked all things Papa Roach and social media and chocolate. Oh. What is going on? Where do I start? Uh, we just got out of the studio, working on a new record, um, taking a little break from it. We're gonna go back after this little quick little run and uh, finish up the loose ends of a, what we believe is a fantastic P. Roach album. Um, we just had a great show last night. We played in uh, Germany for Reload Festival. We headline it. It was freaking bananas. It's been a busy year. I've not seen you. When, when was it we were out in Belgium? It was about a year ago. It's quicker teeth tour, obviously. Yeah, but. that's right. That's right. That's right. And you shaved my head. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. D didn't I try to put some lines in it or yeah, some shit yeah, like yeah. that? I was gutted when they went. Oh, I tried to put I'm... them back in. So yeah, they're still there. Like, I know. I just I just put some slashes in my eyebrow like a couple weeks ago, and then they like kind of grew back in. So <laughs> I'm like. Instagram is obviously like, I follow your stories and stuff. Love it when you get the family involved and all that. So I love that. Yeah, dude, I, I, uh, I have a tendency to like, just follow my little four-year-old Brixton around with my camera all the time when I'm home. I'm just like, he just, he's my little muse, man. He just entertains me. He fills me with so much joy. But sometimes I take a hiatus from the social media. You know, when we were making our record, I just put it down for like two months and just you know, instead of scrolling and doing that, I was just completely focused on creativity. And, and sometimes I think it's healthy for me to to just step away from it and just not even do the social media. So it's it's not a love-hate relationship. It's just that, you know, know when to do it and know when to pull back from it. Do you find that as a band as well? Like trying to keep a lot of what you do behind the scenes off of social media. Obviously, it's so much different now in as much as it's way more intrusive. Yeah, I mean, I feel there's there's a delicate balance, you know, it's like when we made this, re when we just did this new record, we didn't have any cameras in the room, we didn't do any documenting of this record, because we don't want people to know everything about how it was created. We want people to listen to the music and only be focused on the music, you know, and we did a making of on the last record, and it's cool, you know, to let people in, but it's like, I kind of have the mind where it's like, I want to be very selective about how I let people in. You know, and if you want to come see, you know, pictures of my life and what I'm up to, then come follow me on my socials, you know. But with the band, it's like, it's a bit more like selective in a sense, you know, because it's like, you can't, I don't know, I just don't want to give everything away. You know, those moments when we come up with that riff and it's, and it's like, nobody was there and there wasn't a fly on the wall outside of the world watching us while we recorded, while we wrote Last Resort, you know, that was like our moment. So we got an hour tonight and we want to we want to have a balance of the old school and the new school. And, but what's dope, what we figured is on this last uh, touring cycle, touring on Crooked Teeth, is that we've we've really found that the new material blends very well with the old material. Yeah. So take us through what you do before you go on stage. To get my, prepare myself for the stage, I'm going to be real. It all starts with the fucking hair. You know what I'm saying? You can understand this, my brother. Got to keep my fade tight. You know the importance of a tight fade. I know all about it. What, what grade's that? Uh, this is a three. Uh, starts with the hair, but then uh, about an hour before a step on stage, it's a, uh, I'll make a dramatic exit from wherever I am. And I roll to the dressing room and I break out my ironing board and I iron my shirt. My shirt is sweating before I even put the shirt on. The shirt knows. We about to have a rock and roll show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I do my goofy ass warm ups, which is yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, 
And then after that is I, I just turn up to my favorite music, you know, and just start bouncing off the walls and, you know, just feeling the energy in the room and vibing out with my guys in, in the dressing room. And it's always on the P. Roach turn up before, you know, jumping off couches and putting my head through the ceiling if possible and then take that to the stage. Two, three, go! You know what I'm saying? Taking it everywhere. It's all about the hair, baby. Don't you ever forget it. <laughs> I love it, dude. Great seeing you again, man. For sure.